is Facundo Stamperini. I'm from the south of Chile, and I am into ceramics, more specifically wheel throwing. Pottery, to me, was a life-changing experience because I started doing it the first time I came as an international student to the U.S. back in 2016. And because I couldn't speak any English, it was a way for me to disconnect and, and really got along with the people in the studio and got along with my teachers really well. I actually didn't even know that I had enrolled into a ceramics class and they let me enroll into two art classes and I just kind of showed up and I, I had no idea what clay was, but I just started doing it and fell in love with it. This is all Raku, Raku firing, which is a special technique. I like this stuff because it's more technical. It's harder to get to a bigger scale. Bottles are particularly, they take some technique and lots of fails to actually be able to succeed. I couldn't do them for a long time and I just wanted to be able to do it. They're, they're not even functional, they're, they don't serve any purpose, but they're, they're my creation, you know, so they, they have a lot of value to me. It's hard, you know, like to have a, to keep it consistent, make it come out, then make it go in. It's like precision. Making a bowl is way more straightforward. The first thing you do is you cut off a piece of clay off of a bag and then you have to wedge it, which is, is a process where you're just like applying pressure so that the clay is pushing against clay and rotating. So any air bubbles that were in there would pop out and you make it. So you have to center it. You have to drop a hole in the middle, open the hole, which will be your bottom. And then you're gonna have a really, you're gonna have a big chunk of clay and, it'll, and you have to be able to bring that up. You make it into a cylinder and then you can form it into, by pushing out more with your inside hand for example and holding with the outside and kind of with a rib or something trying to do the shape you want to do and once you're done doing that you let it dry and then you can actually trim a foot which is a carving process in which you create this foot once that's ready you gotta let your piece dry 100 percent completely for it to go into the kiln for the first time for a bisque fire that's basically just 1900 degrees Fahrenheit. And then your piece will come out as a bisque ware with no color. And at that point, it will still absorb lots of water, which will help during your glazing or painting process by absorbing all of these minerals, because that's what basically glazes are, just minerals mixed up with water. And that fire, when fired at a certain temperature, they melt and convert into this glass that has certain properties. You can't rush anything. Like you can't rush the drying process. You can't rush the firing process. You can't rush, you can't try to pull up your clay super fast in the wheel. Like it's gonna take a many pull-ups, you know? The shaping, the same thing. You've gotta learn to let it go because all, a lot of it won't be successful. And that is because, mainly due to lack of patience. Yeah, I've broken pieces in many, many ways. But it's okay, I, uh, it used to be a big deal, but then I kind of learned that it's, it's part of it. I opened my kiln and I know that there may be some broken stuff in there, but who cares? It means a lot to me when other people are interested in what I'm doing. And this especially, like, it's a pretty big deal. I, I'm, I'm really happy about it. And yeah, the community around here, I, I, we are located out in Genoa. So not a lot of people want to drive all the way from Reno to check this out. So lots of my neighbors are interested and they come for the firing processes. And it's, it's cool, it's fun. And yeah, it's good to, to be known, you know. <laughs>